Hey, this is Idea Coaches, Coach East Rome. We're on the weight class, the state of the UFC slash UFC 196 review. It's been a long time since I did one of these, but I feel that what's been taking place lately and the nepotism of the UFC, I feel it's time to actually talk about this. So before I get into the, the 196 review, I need to uh, explain a couple of things. I'm not going to review in every single fight. I'm just going to go over a couple of the prelims, a couple of the lower main card uh, fights going on. First off, Eric Silva. Um, it was once deemed as the future of the welterweight class. It's very clear that he's not. However, I feel that he's one of the most exciting fighters. And I do like those type of fighters who, you know what, if they're going to get embarrassed, it's going to be shocking. But if they win, it's also going to be shocking as well. And I, I really do like that. I think he has a good place in the card. As for his opponent, whom I completely forgot the name of, I'm only doing this in one take. I felt that he was a very technical striker. And I think he's a good wrestle fuck when he gets to the higher echelon of the Walter Weed division. Also, I want to talk about Latifi. Latifi's had some very impressive fights, mainly because he's a very aggressive fighter. He's too short at 205 to be anything great, and he's a little bit too old, but I do feel that he deserves a place in the UFC. I, I would hate for him to go, like be sucked up by Bellator or something like that. Um, Brandon Thatch was pretty much like the like the new Almeida, the big guy coming down to the Walter Weed division, and has pretty much just been pretty much a gatekeeper. I think this is like his third loss straight. Hasn't been able to put uh, put the one and two together. I'm sure he has the skills, but he just doesn't have the ground game. And I don't know what he's doing in his training camps these days because he always seems to get defeated the same way. Uh, he really gave up uh, towards the end of that fight. So let's go on into it, into the, the, the main bouts. Misha Tate versus Holly Holm for the Bantamweight Women's Championship. A lot of people thought that Holly Holm was just going to decimate Misha Tate, like she just Ronda Rousey, not understanding that Misha Tate's a very, very different fighter and wouldn't charge in. That was covered through the commentators of the UFC. I'm not going to repeat what they said. However, I, ha I have to say this. A at this level, uh, Holly Holm's ground game is pretty shitty. Uh, it could have been a 10-8 round for round two. I feel that uh, perhaps if Tate um, had a little bit more time. She would have got the victory in the second round. But I do give props to Holly Holm maintaining her composure and she winning ten rounds uh, one, three, and four. And going to the champ to the final round, the, the fifth round, she was up uh, three rounds to one. Uh, I would say, I would say this. I'm glad Holly. I'm glad Misha Tate is the winner. I had the pleasure of meeting her a couple of times over at Extreme Couture. She's very nice. Now we're kind of in the situation where well this 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 title is going to be bouncing around a whole lot because she's going to be faced off Ronda Rousey. They said that immediately. They said she's going to face Ronda Rousey. I feel that her game has vastly improved from the first two fights with with uh, Triple R. But at the same time, is it enough for her to actually defeat her? I'm going to say no. So then we have the Holly Holm situation where we'll have Holly Holm. Um, if Ronda Rousey gets the belt again, then Holly Holmes number one contender um, automatically. And I feel that Ronda Rousey is a little bit of a mental midget, and I don't think she actually wants to have, fight Holly Holm at all, period. I mean, having suicidal thoughts, I mean, that's that's worse than retiring. And speaking of retiring, Dana White months ago told Misha Tate to retire when, um, when Misha Tate was kind of running through the gauntlet, being the gatekeeper of the bantamweight division. Um, now they have to promote her as a champion. So... I really, I really dislike how the UFC has been conducting their business as of late. They've, everything's been pretty much about Ronda Rousey and Conor McGregor. Ronda Rousey and Conor McGregor. Now these two people have lost. And I'm very concerned as to, with the amount of disrespect they've given to the rankings, how are they going to start marketing these, these fighters now? Because now you have a number of very good fighters that no one knows about. And you have your two main stars who actually been kind of embarrassed. So w w listen to me here. The UFC has a heavyweight champion, Fabrizio Verdum, who has defeated Noguera, Fedor, Cain Velasquez, um, Alistair Overeem, and he speaks three languages. Yet no one knows of him, except for the hardcore fans. We, we as MMA fans, should be sick of seeing this guy. This guy should be popular in Canada, Europe, Brazil, Mexico. The guy speaks English. Portuguese and Mexican. I have no idea how come this guy's not being promoted properly. Because you'll see, ever since Ryan Strike Strikeforce, have been very complacent about how they market their fighters. It's, you know, they had John Jones, who's 
who started off his UFC career, you know, with spinning elbows and spinning kicks, and he got his grown grassroots fans. Conor McGregor um, had a really grassroots um, fan base out in Ireland. Had a documentaries made about him while he was hurt, and Ronda Rousey had, had her own Ronda Rousey had her own niche market while in Strike Force. So I'm not too sure as to what exactly the UFC is going to do now that their two major stars have lost very decisively. So let's walk into the main event. The main event, Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz. And a lot of people think like, oh, Conor McGregor is so great because he's stepping up and going up a couple weight classes to fight Nate Diaz. Let's be clear here. Nate Diaz is not and never really was a true welterweight. He is the smallest welterweight there can be. He's really a 155er. Conor McGregor, I feel, has the, the, the push to go up in higher weight classes because the IV ban back in October, uh, right after he won the title, or right before he won the title. I think that... What's going on now and what's and what's going to take place is now that, that I think Conor McGregor is going to be Adrian Broner. I think he still has a lot of skills. He still has power. Um, he's still very marketable. However, now that he's not going to have a lot of favorable matchups. He's going to have to go down and face Aldo again. Aldo, while old, I don't we don't know how mentally tough he is since he only lost one time in 10 years. How that's going to affect him into the rematch. I had him personally for the first fight, as well did a lot of other people. Uh, because Conor McGregor walked in as a slight underdog right before the fight. Frankie Edgar is a terrible matchup, but I think that Edgar Edgar's footwork is almost it's 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 a it's a little by the sword, die by the sword. A lot of times you see Frankie Edgar get caught. Frankie Edgar is actually confusing himself with his own footwork. So now you have you know you have Conor McGregor who has to defend the featherweight belt, and now he wants to go up into maybe lightweight because welterweight will not happen. And people are thinking that he can beat Robbie Lawler is fucking ridiculous because you got to remember these guys are coming down from like 190, 200 pounds, sometimes a little bit more, to go down to fight at 170. Remember Anthony Johnson used to be 220, 230, and going down to 170. It's ridiculous. So the power doesn't translate in the upper, and when you, when you keep on going up in weight like that. I feel that now that all that favoritism and, and that they've given Conor McGregor, he's a, he's, a, he's a huge star. He's a great personality. But will he be the next Anderson Silva? Will he be the next John Jones? Will he be the next GSP? That just won't happen. Um, I think that the, the Nate Diaz fight was the easiest Walter Wade fight. I think I think your suit was very smart to not have Eddie Alvarez, uh, Anthony Pettis, uh, Donald Cerrone fight Conor McGregor because those were very losable matchups. I think Conor McGregor can do well in the lightweight division. However, I don't think he never win the belt in the lightweight division. Just too many big stuff there. And the, unlike back in the day, like let's say in 2008, 2009, where the lightweights are pretty much all wrestlers plus BJ Penn, the lightweight division now is pretty diverse in their skill set. And I just don't think that Conor McGregor's ground game or... I would say just not only just his ground, because we all know there's ground game is lacking, but I think that Conor McGregor's response to losing a round is is not going to play out well for him in the elite of the lightweight division. That takedown attempt uh, to Nate Diaz was, 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 was purely out of desperation. I think he was trying to knock the guy out in the first round. And like he said, he wasn't energy efficient. And that pepper style just got up, just caught up to him. He was huffing and puffing, uh, you know, one minute into the second round. And he was looking back, even though he was landing shots on Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz right now, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like, well, where do you go with Nate Diaz? Because now Nate Diaz is, uh, he's a very remarkable fighter. You might want to take him, you might want to give him the um, lightweight title shot. But then you've got the Russian kid who may or may not be hurt again. I don't see Nate defeating RDA even healthy. I, I think that the, the jujitsu cancels out and the speed and the cardio of RDA will will pretty much defeat Nate Diaz. So because UFC has, has, has prodded themselves so much on Ronda Rousey and Conor McGregor, I think we're not having a, a real big issue as to... How are we going to go forward with MMA and the rankings? They're lucky. It's so weird that they're actually becoming just like the WWF, where they bought off the competition and they become very complacent on how they are they building their next fighters because they really don't have any competition. But the tour is going to be around. It's not going to go out, but it'll never be looked the same as the UFC, especially with them pulling off fights like Horse Gracie, King Shamrock, in 2016, that's not going to happen. Yeah, the company runs in out in Japan, you know, by the old Pride guys, but 
I'm not too sure they know where they're going at right now. Um, their first event back in New Year's Eve was very, it was like a Haas pause of combat sports. And they're going to have another one on April 23rd, which is also the Daniel Cormier versus John Jones 2 card, which I don't know why they would go against directly against John Jones versus Daniel Cormier because it's such a remarkable fight. And I don't see a lot of people tuning into Risen just to watch. I mean, I mean, I don't see people turning to Risen in it and and not watching Daniel Cormier in DC. So I'm not exactly sure as to what their plans are, but I hope you know, I hope for the best for them. I hope they actually can develop a a decent light heavyweight division because every single major promotion has had a decent lightweight uh, light heavyweight division. So I, I'm I'm very unsure as to exactly. How the UFC is going to market their next couple of fights. UFC 200 is now kind of fucked. I mean, you have uh, Daniel Cormier, who's 37 years old, uh, challenging for his undisputed belt. Uh, Ronda Rousey, was talking about committing suicide. Misha Tate, who's lost to Ronda Rousey twice, is now the champion. And has a, it has a decent record, but it's not thing. It's, it's very hard to promote like someone who's like, was it 18 and six or something like that. And you also now have Conor McGregor, who is very clear it cannot go up all the way up to 170. It's very clear about that, and it's very doubtful they didn't even do any any major damage in light uh, in lightweight. So that's pretty much my my state of MMA for UFC 196. Uh, once again, Eric Silva's great. The TV's good, a little small, but very entertaining. Now, what do we do with Misha Tate? What do we do with Holly Holm? And it just it, it's it's now a situation where they're playing musical chairs on who do they promote. I hope that John Jones can come back and win in a dominant fashion, so he can be the star once again. And I hope he doesn't get back into trouble. It's just it's just it's kind of hard being a fight fan because there's so many different fights, but so few fighters to care about. And that's just because of the way the UFC has been promoting their fighters for the past four to five years. So okay, guys, uh, I'm wrapping this up right here. Have a good one. Take care.